What's up? So in today's tutorial, we're going to be going over kind of like dark room lighting, like the kind of lighting you do in dark rooms. <laughs> but <laughs> uh, one thing I've been trying to do recently is improve my lighting skills overall. And I've done that by paying very close attention to photographers and the way they light their shots and, and scenes in real life. And I saw an instant jump in my skills with lighting as soon as I'd done that and I looked at it as a completely realistic uh, point of view. And before that, I, I was very bad for leaving scenes, just, uh, you know, the HDRIs to, to make up what, what kind of theme I want. And um, it's a very uncontrolled and chaotic way of working and definitely not professional. So since I've made this change, uh, I have been eager to make a lighting tutorial and share with you some of these tricks and how we can target things like highlights and getting spots on our models to show uh, exactly how we want them. So what I did was I worked in the same project file and made the scene in and just stripped it back down and we'll start the tutorial from there. So I won't get into it too much. I will plug myself I store quickly. So please go have a look at some of my stuff on there. If you please, there's tons of project files. I might just put this one up for free. So go take a look. If you're wondering where the model's from, 3D scans, we all know it, we've all seen it. About 13,000 tutorials have used it. So I'll link that as well. And hopefully this tutorial helps. So yeah, enjoy it. Of course you want to make sure you're in path tracing. I haven't actually, it proves that I've not been in the scene very long. I haven't touched the main render settings. Uh, so, you can maybe bring in a HDRI and put it to about 0.1. I just have some sort of lighting studio in here. And then, Bringing a texture environment, you set it to visible and set it to a, a pretty dark color. Uh, sometimes it's better to work with this as the primary environment. Uh, but the first thing we're going to do is we're going to set up a key light. So one thing I would suggest doing is if you see here, this would usually be your top view. Uh, if you press F2, you will be like this. If you press F2, you'll come to your top view. And then if you change it in cameras to perspective, you can move about while that viewport stays the same, uh, which is awesome. I'm gonna turn these off because anyway. So what we'll do is we'll drop a light down. Uh, I think it's very easy to get in the habit of just using HDRIs to light your scene, and it's not always the most beneficial thing because when you're looking for desired looks, uh, you don't really want to miss out on that. So we'll bring our light a fair bit away from the key light. I'm going to try and mimic that lighting. So I just made sure I wanted, you know, about about, about a third of the, the model uh, lit. And one thing this is really good for is if you're doing phones, cars, one thing I suggest with cars is really going quite crazy with the amount of lights in the scene, adding small thin bars uh, and stuff uh, to get the exact kind of reflections that you want. And then what I did was, I think it was in the texture, I just put a float in. And then I had zero to finish turn the light off. And then I sat it around. around something like that. And then, call that key. And then, a light above the model. Now I usually like to make these discs and stretch them out a bit just so they cover the whole model and then again I'll fall off that. Float You're way 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 down just to the point it's causing some nice shadows down the side of the model. Yeah. So what I'll immediately start doing now is playing with the cam. So I usually load in a lot. Uh, Grace Gear Gorilla have this free pack of LUTs and I found Analog 4 is good for these kind of scenes. And I'll yank down the gamma and I'll yank down the exposure and I'll bring the gamma up a little bit. Play with it until it's somewhere I like. The, it's, it's pretty hard to get it's effect exactly the way you want it without playing with these two things uh, because of course in real life you go into a dark room well physics light 
do this to your camera anyway uh, so that doesn't happen for us we've got to go in and, and, and change the exposure so uh, that's that's why it's, it's not some sort of hack it's it's following reality manually uh, so if you call this um, what do I usually call it detail above no, what, was called? what did I call it before I called it above, I called it above. Um, and then without that light you can see it's just it's giving us some nice shadow going here and then I want to drop in a highlight now the highlights always look fun We'll make it quite small though. So we just bring it out the front here. Again, drop it and fall off. Turn it off here. Now I like to kind of get like a nice rim. So once that's kind of mimicking the key light, I like to completely explore it. Yeah, I think something like that's cool. And then I did, I made it warm in the, in the first scene. And then you can add some nice bloom on that. I'll maybe try and overexpose it a little bit more. Yeah. Yeah, that looks nice. And then for the second one, it was it was literally it was the same light. Moved around here like this, and then made kind of uh, about the same. I think I brought it over the bear a little bit as well, just to make sure it was. Catching all the highlights, yeah, something like that. And then again, bring that down. They will take a bit of tweaking to get right. But it's it's kind of getting there. So for the material, I will make a new one. I used a metallic material. I usually do think this effect looks better with metal materials. This does look quite cool right now, but if we drop the material on the bear. Uh, now there's two ways of doing what I did, is I wanted a kind of like an onyx look. So you can either put a RGB in the specular like that, or you can just go to IOR mode, change it to IOR color or RGB IOR and just leave it. Uh, so just for simplicity we'll do that uh, and then I put a gradient in the roughness which I think is a really good way to do the roughness of objects because it doesn't it gives it a nice wave across it and then I believe after that I had to start tweaking the camera a bit more uh, I had to start tweaking the lights as well making sure they had the, the right amount of power and all of that. Oh, there's a fall off map up in there, that's fine. <laughs> uh, full texture, not a fall off map. <laughs> I'll do the same on that one, yeah. There you go. Full texture. There we go. Now it's getting there. Probably actually get away with bringing this light down. And then, you know, your scene is going to look completely different depending on what you're lighting. And then I did add a reflector as well, which you probably saw. This camera angle was a really nice one. Uh, if I load in the LUT again, here, LUT, LUT, LUT. Because this is going to be really where we see what we have to change in the scene. So one thing I did do as well was I added a noise and a bump. I did a transform on it. Made it very small. Bumped up the contrast. 
played with a guy in my little uh, and that really helped with the lighting I think if we solo that yeah that was fine that really helped with the lighting because no surface is smooth and as soon as you add a, something a bit like that it really helped give off the look that I wanted I do think this highlight probably needs to come to the right a bit like this not cover up so much the back <laughs> and then the rear that can wait so if we come back to our main angle I'm gonna make this smaller as well I don't think that should be so big yeah there we go I think that's probably the quickest I can set up that lighting. Uh, one thing to pay attention to the highlights is making them uh, different colours. You know, I made them warm as opposed to making them uh, neutral like the other lights. And I think when you're playing with highlights like that, you can have a lot of fun uh, messing with that. Uh, now, I did have a disc in the scene. Where did it? There, the reflector. Now what I did with this, I brought it up here like this. I'm just gonna make all these lights visible. And turn it off there. Turn it off here. And then I've got an emission texture here. And I put that on, and you can't notice it here. But if you come to the rear and we set up the camera in the exact same fashion and in the texture i just made it something really ridiculous like yeah something really ridiculous like 1500 and then play with that a little bit and uh, that gave us a really really nice outline it's not exactly the same but it's yeah, something like this and then from that side view as well, it gave a, a nice balance across both of them. Um, one thing though is this highlight is playing far too much against. One thing you've got to watch with that reflector though is that you're turning it off from other angles that you don't want to see it at. Because uh, if not, it's going to play tricks with you. Uh, so it's definitely something to keep aware of. You can always make one side much warmer than the other as well. Uh, that above light is probably your best ch shot <laughs> at creating a nice fill. I did have a fill light in the other scene, but I turned it off because I didn't like it. So if we go look at this compared to where we started, call that tutorial. And we knock these back on, we knock the cameras back on. Uh, you can kind of see the one I just made was probably quite a bit darker. I also had the sphere behind it in this scene. The reflector was... Okay, so the way I actually had the reflector in this scene was it was right, right up against it. Like this. Uh, and of course from the front, that looks horrible. Uh, but from the back, it, you know, did a bit of this. So... That was fun. Assuming you turn off everything else though. And then of course I just added this uh, sphere in the background which wasn't really doing anything but it was cool to have it there. In the original material I don't think I've actually went into that yet. Uh, I did do the RGB spectrum this way. I think that's probably what made it darker. So I think that's all I'm gonna go over regarding this lighting tutorial. I don't think there's much more I can really go across but I hope you can take away something from it and uh, stuff like this it is trial and error try not to get in the habit of placing your lights in the same kind of area in space every single scene you know you put your key light on the right side at a certain amount of distance and then you know, fill light above just try to vary it look at the the image in your head that you've got or what you want to produce and and, and see see how that will work it's very easy to load in a, a softbox setup or a studio or a hdri and and do that every single time 
um, but when you really want stylized work, I think this is the way to go. So thank you for watching. Again, my self eye is in the description. I'm probably going to put this scene up for free because I made it like an hour and why would I charge for that? It's silly. So yeah, you can go take a look at that. You can also support me on Patreon. Thanks to my Patreons. I've got like four of them, which is awesome. But yeah, I will see you in a few days for another tutorial. I uploaded this one like four days late. I tried to put a tutorial up every Friday, but this is four days late. So it's up now, right? Okay. See you in the next tutorial. Bye.